and, you know, delivering Bibles from the air is a creative way to get the gospel into closed nations, but it is nothing new. Just ask the Christians in South Korea. They live next to one of the most restricted nations in the world and one of the worst violators of religious freedom. And that's why believers in the South have been floating scriptures to their neighbors in the North for decades. For you, a few years back, I traveled to the border of North and South Korea to witness this aerial offensive. Just before sunset, a van load of Christians from Seoul heads north. We cannot show you their faces or reveal their names. What we're doing could get us into trouble. Where are we going today? We're going here, some four miles from the North Korean border and close to the demilitarized zone. The demilitarized zone, or DMZ, is one of the most heavily fortified and potentially dangerous places on Earth. We'll just wait up here at the top of the stairs, sir. One million armed North Korean troops stand ready on their side of the DMZ. The South has just as many. And as we get ready to head to this particular location, uh, one factor that uh, could ruin this whole thing is the weather. One slight change in the wind direction could mess up the mission. Peter has dubbed this Operation Dandelion. We started this project back in 1991, and just as a dandelion needs the wind to spread its seed, we need the wind to spread the message. That message is the Word of God printed in the Korean language on thousands of bright orange balloons. It's almost impossible to get Bibles into North Korea, so using balloons is one of the most effective ways to share the gospel. A tank in the back of the van pumps helium into the balloons. The team works quickly, all the time keeping tabs on the wind direction. Prayers are whispered over each balloon. And then the release. A few minutes later, the balloons begin their slow drift across North Korean airspace. By sending these balloons, we let our North Korean brothers and sisters know that we are praying for them, and the scriptures on the balloons are meant to encourage them. The earnest prayers begin here at this undisclosed location in Seoul. Every week since 1991, 78-year-old Oh Mon Duk, along with a handful of other believers, has been preparing each balloon for the flight into North Korea. I was born in North Korea. This is my way of helping to get the gospel back to my countrymen. And the process is almost done. They're just putting the final touches to today's balloon operation. In essence, this is how it works. They, they have a hole in here that they fill helium in, put a tape around it, and then off it goes into the skies of North Korea. The helium will leak out of the balloon and eventually fall to the ground. And when someone picks it up, they'll be able to read all 16 chapters of the Book of Mark. Peter used boats in the past with other groups to launch balloon offensives from the sea. These balloons are larger and contain a small radio, a Bible, and other Christian literature. In addition to the balloon operation, Peter's group organizes a weekly radio broadcast that's recorded in Seoul, then transmitted over medium and shortwave frequencies into North Korea. The radio broadcast is like a regular church service with worship and preaching of the word. The North Korean government routinely tries to jam our signal but we have other methods of getting the message across. And this is what motivates the team. CBN News obtained exclusive audio recordings and photographs of secret underground church meetings inside North Korea. And when a North Korean accepts Jesus Christ, he or she will face persecution, imprisonment, and possibly death because of their faith. Peter gave CBN News footage that apparently aired on a Japanese television channel, allegedly showing the execution of North Korean Christians. <laughs> Trying to get precise figures on the number of Christians today in North Korea is extremely difficult. Based on data gathered from North Korean defectors and international human rights groups, 
We estimate there are approximately 30,000 Christians being held in political prison camps and about 10,000 underground believers who are in hiding throughout the country. Back along a stretch of the North-South Korean border, it's a little past midnight. Using the cover of darkness, Peter's team continued to deploy hundreds of balloons at multiple locations. Today, the wind conditions have been good. Often the winds will change suddenly and we have to wait. Sometimes we come back the next day. We are persistent. People's lives are on the line. We will continue to do this and continue to pray until North Korea is free and the Christians can worship Jesus Christ without fear. What was it like to be there? Uh, you know, the reality is we're watching the wind. They, are, they have all the <laughs> instruments to look to make sure that the wind is heading in the right direction. Otherwise, it goes back into sure. South Korea. Yeah. So it's all, it's strategic. It's all about the wind. It has to be perfect. And it was. Yeah, it sure awesome. was. Awesome. Yeah. That is such a great story. Thank you.